know what today is? <laughs> Besides a good day to die? It's January 14th. In the Julian calendar, it actually is the first day of the year. Hmm. In the Julian calendar, the first day of the year, and so if it's the first month of the year, right, in the Julian calendar, in the book of Exodus, the Lord told Moses before they left Egypt in bondage, he said, on the 14th day, <laughs> that month at twilight sacrifice an animal for Passover seven days later they left think about that we are in a time right now where all time frames I don't want to say are colliding I want to say they're merging the Gregorian, the Julian calendar, the uh, Hebrew calendar, all of these time frames are merging now. This has never happened before. The reality of it has never come forth until now. Things are about to... So just think about this. In, in the time that uh, when the Lord said, you know, okay, man, tell them, Release the gold, release the silver, and all everything into your hands, and you're coming out. And he, one of the things he said, he said, I am commanding Pharaoh to release my army. Now, they didn't feel like army. They felt like slave. Amen? But see, it's what God sees us not at, not what we see ourselves at. And so many times we fall into that place and how we see ourselves at. We allow the mirror to dictate who we are. We allow our decisions and our mistakes and failures or even our successes to dictate who we are we allow uh, and how we feel or our sick sicknesses or diseases uh, to dictate who we are when God says you're you're uh, you're my army you're my military but Lord I've done this look what he said to Gideon great man of honor G Gideon was like what you must be talking to the donkey next to me no he said I'm talking to you here he was just throwing grain and wheat and sifting the uh, thresh floor. See, it's not what we see ourselves at. It's what God sees us at. So there's a place that you and I must constantly get to. And that's reckon yourselves to be dead. To what? Yourself. Isn't that what Jesus required? He said, if you really want to be my servants, if you really want to follow me, then you must first do what? Deny yourself. See, there's two selves. There's the self of the flesh, and there's the self of the Lord. When you are born again, you get the self of the Lord. It's not the self of the flesh. It's the self of the Lord. Amen? Is everybody okay? Okay. All right, good. Well, let's go to Jeremiah 17 then, verse 5. <laughs> Reckon yourselves dead. So next time somebody tries to hold you up to them, and they hold a gun at you, you can't kill what's dead. So no time screaming, ah, you're dead. Amen? <laughs> Verse 5, let's speak it. Thus says the Lord, curse is the man who trusts in himself. What self is this? Self of the flesh. And makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes by, because he'll be blinded. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. But blessed is the man 
who trust in the Lord. Whoa. So blessed is in that person who trusts in the self of the Lord. Does everybody get it? In the self of the Lord. And whose hope is in the Lord, for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and it will not fear when heat comes. And it will not be anxious, hello, in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the thoughts and the minds, even to give everyone according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Again, curse is the individual that trusts in the self of flesh. But blessed is the individual that trusts in the self of the Lord. That means you must be born. You, this is your new born again self. Amen? This is the new born again self. 2 Timothy 3, starting at verse 1. But know this, in the last days perilous times will come. Are we in perilous times? How do we know it? Because men will be called lovers of the self of what? Flesh. Amen. Lovers of money. Boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. Oh, they have a form of godliness, but they truly deny its power. And from such people do what? Turn away. For these are sort of those who creep into households and ministries and businesses and, and bring people into captivity. Loaded down with what? Sins. And light away with what? Various lusts. Lust. Living under satanic torment. Here's something very powerful. It says they always learn. Oh, man, and they're always trying to educate themselves. They're always trying to improve themselves. They're always learning, but they're never able to get free. And they come to the knowledge of the truth because truth sets you free. See, they, they compromise the truth. To them, the truth is not full. It's partial. So they now never allow the true truth, the, the full penetrating truth to penetrate them, to bring conviction. When truth begins to penetrate them, they bring reasoning. They bring justification. Well, why is that? Because the life of the self, flesh of self, is stronger. They are yielding to that more than they are the, the self of the Lord. You know, Jesus could be standing in front of you. People still have a choice. Amen? Look how many people stood in front of Jesus when he was here. And they still had a choice. God does not interfere with your choice. But he tries to persuade you in doing the right thing. Amen? It says it causes you to do things. So there is a right and a wrong way, isn't there? There's a left and there's a right, isn't there? Amen. Hallelujah. Lovers of themselves and their positions. They, they, so they love themselves and their positions they represent because it is the self of the flesh. They promote themselves more than they do God. Oh, they have a form of godliness. They, they may, may worship, they have a form of godliness. That means that they pretend to worship God. They pretend, they speak his word, they do all kinds of things. How many of y'all the Satan could do, uh, imitate a Christian very well? Very well. So have these people reckoned themselves dead? Heck no. I run into, I'm not going to say many, but enough Christians that proclaim to be Christians, and I'm not saying that they don't love God, and I'm not saying that they don't believe. But they don't maintain the fruits. They maintain their character and their credibility. Amen? That means that the, 
life or the f self flesh has got more dominion over them because they're allowing it than the life of the self of the Lord. Amen? Remember what you yield to, you become. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Is everybody there? For those who live according to the flesh set their thoughts or minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be fleshly minded or carnally minded, this is the self of flesh, right? Is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded, the life of the, uh, of the self of the Lord is to be what? Have life and peace. Because the carnal mind, the carnal mind, the thoughts, the mind of the self, of the flesh, is enmity to God. Does anybody see this? See, this is a battle that's within us all the time. It says here, for it is not subject to the ways of God or the laws of God, nor indeed can it be. Wow. Nor indeed can it be. So the mind of the, flat, of the self of the flesh can never be converted. It can never be converted. The only thing you can do with it is take dominion over it and nullify its influence. It's there. And remember, a mind is nothing but a storage place of memory. So that's why the enemy uses your old man. They call it the old man. What is he? He's the self of the flesh, isn't he? It's what you were born with. Oh, happy days. <laughs> So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. In other words, uh, the carnal mind of the flesh itself, it's, it's, it has hatred, rebellious, and disobedience against God. It can't be converted. It must be, you must be born again of the self of the Lord with the pure mind. And again, the mind is a what? It's a storage place. And the old mind still has the old memories, but the new mind is being renewed. It's being restored now. It's being refreshed with new thoughts from above and from the future, not from the past or earthly. Romans uh, 7, verse 15. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. <laughs> if then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. What is the sin that dwells in you? The s flesh of the what? Self. Does everybody get it? Self of flesh either way. For I know that in me, that is my flesh. In me, in my flesh, my old self, nothing good dwells. <laughs> For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now, you got to remember somebody. Here's Paul finally coming to a place where, you know what? I just realized my whole life, the things of my life, what's been going on. He was able to explain something very powerful. That's why Jesus took the old and the new and brought it to one. In verse 20. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me, the self a flesh dwells in me, the presence of evil. I find in a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills me, who dwell, wills to do good. For I delight in the law of the Lord God according to the inward man. Hello. But I see another law in my members, warned against the law of my 
thoughts, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Now, this is something very powerful because he says something. He says, I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. But in verse 22, he says, I delight in the law of God according to the what? Inward man. That is the new born again self. The new born again self. But he's realizing the battle that's within him. Remember when Paul stood before the Lord and he said, Lord, man, I got this infirmity. I realize what's happening. He said, Satan put a thorn in his flesh, remember? And he was crying out to the Lord for help. And the Lord said to him, my what? Grace is sufficient. Why? Because it wasn't about a sickness or disease. Paul finally recognized the wickedness of his flesh. There was another member there. See, you must recognize, I don't want to say that there's two people there, <laughs> but there's the old and there's the new. There's two selves in you. There's the self of the flesh, and there's the self of the Lord. And which one you choose to submit to, which one you choose to feed, amen, which one you choose to starve is the one that will take position. That's why when people backslide, usually they backslide and they, they, they stay away, don't they? They stay away from uh, fellowship. They stay away from certain... Why? Because the enemy doesn't want them and, uh, to restore or, or awaken the self of the Lord. They don't, they, they don't want them to recognize that there's another old evil thing there. Now, when the, please realize that in, he says, in my flesh self, nothing good dwells. Amen? Nothing good dwells. <laughs> Let's go a little further here. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 24. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my thoughts, my mind, I myself, my new one, I serve the law of God. But with the mind and thoughts of the flesh, I serve the law of sin. Wow. So he says, in my flesh of self, nothing good dwells. With the pure mind of thoughts of Christ, I serve the law of God and the will of God. But with the mind of thoughts of the flesh, I serve the law of sin, the presence of evil, the offspring of Satan. See, your old self is an offspring of Satan. Amen. You know, many times we're blaming the devil when it's the self of the flesh that's taking dominion or we're allowing it to and you can't cast it out unfortunately I've tried the only thing you do is crucify it <laughs> and you know what we hate it we hate that old thing we hate that old ways and when we begin to find ourselves doing them again, it's like, man, I can't believe it. I did it again. Well, thank God for repentance and the blood of the Lamb. <laughs> Amen. Romans 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How should we who died to sin live any longer in it or do you not know that as many as of us who were baptized in this this is two representations in Christ meaning the baptism of the Holy Spirit of Jesus were baptized into his death therefore we are buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. The newness of what? The new self of the Lord. Amen. For if we have been united together in this likeness of, of his death, certainly we also be in the likeness of his what? Resurrection. Oh, praise God. Now, we have reckoned our selves, amen, to be dead to self through the repentance of the association with sin. And we are washed by the blood of the Lamb, and we are baptized in the Spirit of God. 
so that we may walk in the newness. Because without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can't walk in the newness. The new self of the Lord must have the presence of God. Amen? Must have the presence of God. It must be fed by the eternal words of God. That's what makes us brand new. We are walking in the new, so we're living from the future, not from the past. Hallelujah. We're believing in the promises of God. Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Knowing this, verse 6, that our old man, hello, was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves of the old man. So it's called sin, but your old man is sin. Now, I'm not talking about your ex-husband or ex-boyfriend or whatever. The old man. Amen. For he who has died has been freed from sin or the old, the self of life, the, li the self of flesh. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died for sin, to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves, what? Dead. Indeed, to the old man, which is sin, the old self of the flesh. But alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin or the old man reign in your mortal members, that you should obey its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under what? Grace. Wow. So we must reckon ourselves to be dead. Amen? Reckon ourselves to be dead. Yes, please. <laughs> but alive in Christ under the plan of escape. What are you escaping from? Evil forces of influence. <laughs> you are escaping from the world system. I really believe that the purpose of this, the Lord is speaking about, is so that we can begin to recognize more of the self of the flesh and the self of the Lord. And begin to separate them more and more and more. See, the more you get filled with the Spirit, the more the separation comes. It like puts a wall between them. And the more you feed your new man, the more he's able to recognize and say no to the old. 2 Corinthians 4, please, in verse 7. But we have this what? This treasure in earth and vessels, that the excellence of the power of God may be of God and not of us. Well, what is this earthen treasure? It's the new man. It's the self of the Lord. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. That the life of Jesus also may be what? Manifested in our mortal flesh. That's taking dominion, isn't it? So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe that I, and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that we who, ra he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with him. For all things are for your sake, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, are you ready? We do not lose heart. Even though our outward man, 
What's the outward man? The self of flesh, right? Is perishing. <laughs> Yet the inward man, the self of the Lord, is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceedingly and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen are eternal. Again, as we live in this reality, we are dying to the flesh of self. So the self of Christ can be manifested and seen through us. This must become a reality to you. Amen? It must become real to you. John 8, 21. Then Jesus said to them all, again, I am going away and you will seek me and you will die in your sins. You're going to die in yourself. Where I go, you cannot come. So the Jews said, will he kill himself? Because he says, where I go, you cannot come. And he said to them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. This is what makes us not of this world. Even though the self of the flesh is still of the world. It's from beneath. In other words, its source is from beneath. It's, in other words, wickedness, evil. Verse 24, therefore I said to you that you will die in yourself or in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Then they said to him, who are you? And Jesus said to them, just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge according, uh, concerning you. But he who sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. But they did not understand that he spoke of them as to the Father. Oh, hallelujah. We are not of the world. Amen. Thank God. It didn't, I didn't say you didn't feel like you were not of the world, but you're not of the world. Luke 9, verse 23. Then Jesus said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself. That's called... Reckon yourself dead. And take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it a man if he gains the whole world and he himself is destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words of him, the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. Denying yourself of the flesh is the reckoning yourself dead. Amen? Reckoning yourself dead. And Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility and reasonable service. You certainly don't want to present to him something that's not right. <laughs> Amen. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your thoughts, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. There's a place where we must maintain a new way of thinking to keep the new self activated. It's our responsibility to, to make ourselves constantly activated. That's why the Word tells us to stir yourself up. Amen? We must keep ourselves activated. You know, just no matter where you go, just hallelujah. I'll be in places waiting in line and just go, hallelujah. Everybody around me about passes out, but I'm stirred up. You know, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, out of nowhere. And, or just start seeing, you know. 
What are you doing? You're stirring yourself up. You're reconnecting. You're, you're keeping the new man alive. Amen? Because the enemy wants to put you to sleep. <laughs> Psalm 16, verse 7. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be what? Oh, wow. So there's a place where you and I must maintain a new way of thinking. Stir yourself up and keep the Lord before you. Amen? Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul and shield, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life, and in your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. Pleasures forevermore. Again, it's time to recognize yourself dead. Because the world is trying to keep your old man more active than your new man. Satan knows that he can, if he can get you to deny the new man, he can activate the old man. And we're seeing that all over the world. That's why many people, are, are Christians, are backsliding. Look how many of these legislation dudes are all, they're not, they're, they're stepping down from office because they've been caught. I'm not seeing too much repentance on TV. Well, they're justifying their reasoning. They're concerned about going to prison. <laughs> they're not concerned about going to hell yet. That's because they're still living in the flesh. Or the, uh, the new man has been separated so far from the old man because the old man is more activated. Does everybody understand that? You know, if you're put in a, a soundproof room, you can't talk to no one, you can't hear anything. That's what the enemy does to your, uh, your old man. And the only thing that you can hear is from the enemy. I mean, you can talk to people and they'll just say, yeah, 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 yeah. And no, they, ain't, they, ain't listen, they ain't hearing a thing. They're listeners, not a hearer. But when you hear, you put it into action. So remember, it's our responsibility to stir ourselves up. It's our responsibility, not God's, ours. We have the self of the Lord. We are eternal. I am because he is. He was and no more. <laughs> so one of the things the word says is, if you are led by the spirit of God, your flesh is crucified. But you can't be loved by the Spirit of God unless you're filled with the Spirit of God, right? And you can have all the forms of being filled. But still do your own thing. Remember how many times Jesus said, how many come before me saying, you practice lawlessness. Amen? I don't know you. And we are in this time right now of transition. There's such a tremendous time. And all the timelines are now falling together. I love it. There's an about to be an explosion that's happening. And we're going to see it. And God is preparing us for it. Amen. Praise God. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. <laughs> uh, help us to die. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.